Well, welcome to another edition of the Caribbean Praise. My name's Grant Lee. It's good to have your company today. My guest on the program today, she is, my goodness, she is a fireball. She really is. And she is an established singer, songwriter, motivational speaker, an author that was born in London to West African parentage. When I found out this, I was like, Wow, really? Because um, there's some other things that's going to be revealed in today's interview that's going to really grab the attention of a few people out there. Welcome my guest today, Toyen Adikali. Did I get that right? Nearly? You did. Nearly, actually closer than most. So Toyen Adikali. Adikali. Thank you so much, Toyen. Toyen, you are an absolute child of God. You are an absolute child of God. And one of the things that I love about you is that your hands will be forever kept busy doing the Lord's work. I've witnessed this for myself. And um, that's one of the things I love about you. I'll give God thanks for that. Um, you know, um, ask and it should be given. I, I asked him to use me and I didn't realise what I was asking. <laughs> But, you know. Is this is this the reason why they say be careful what you ask for? Absolutely, and also to whom much is given, much is required. So clearly, he's blessed me, and if he's blessing us, it's to be a blessing. So I, I'm privilege. Amen. Now, um, you've been singing since the tender ages of your teen years, teen years, teenager years, and. Mm -hmm. um, just, just doing a little bit of research because of how your father, what your father did for you know the um, sound system community, that sort of like brought you into um, being able to sing back in vocals for a lot of famous people. Just list some of the names. So when I say famous, we're not joking. Tell us some of the names that the people that you've worked with. with Courtesy of your father over the years. Let's 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 do some name dropping, shall we? Oh my gosh, I hate that. Uh, well, pick a genre then. Reggae. Gregory Isaacs, uh, Freddie McGregor, Sanchez, Thriller, um, Delroy Wilson, Ken Booth. Um, gosh, there, there, there's too 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 numerous on the reggae side. Pick another Dennis genre. Brown. <laughs> Dennis Brown, of course. <laughs> Dennis Brown, Alton Ellis. My goodness, um, Alton Ellis as well. Yeah, pop, jazz, R&B, uh, Cliff Richard, Soul to Soul, Imagination. Um, it's been varied. Um, yeah. And I've been a minute of it. Now, I have to say this, because if I finish the interview and I don't say this, because when I found out, I was like, what? Your dad... <laughs> is the sound system owner, Fat Man. So he's my musical father. Your musical so, father. Okay, your musical father. Was, he was a father figure. Um, my, my blood father is from Nigeria. Um, okay. But Fat Man was the one that um, instigated us. He managed us and he brought me into the industry. And he always had a vision for me to, to be a solo artist, even though I was a part of the instigators with Mafia and Fluxy. Okay. And he, the journey has continued to this point. Let, let me backtrack a bit because I remember the, the name Instigators. Mm -hmm. And what I remember of that group were that like, they were fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Tell us some of the titles of their songs. So our first number one hit was Let's Make Love. And um, that was really, that, that was a blessing. Um, oh my gosh, there's been a few after and I can't even recall all of them now. It, it I was, know, because there were so many, right? <laughs> yeah, but the, the instigators were often confused with the investigators. And the difference between us is instigators had a female vocalist. Uh, investigators didn't. Okay, okay. Wow. What history. What history. Absolutely fantastic. All right. So you were part of that group for how long? Mm -hmm. Two years. 
if that, yeah, two years. And um, thereafter, as I mentioned, Fat Man always had a vision for me to be a solo artist. But um, the next person to pick me up was um, another legend, um, Black Slate, Anthony Brightly. And that went into my first solo single, which um, also became a hit, Touch a Four Leaf Clover. Okay. Now, let me let me stop you right there for a little bit, because you just keep coming out with these names, and I'm, I'm like... <clears throat> I know that name from somewhere. Now, Anthony, uh, forgive me if I've got this wrong. Wasn't Anthony um, Sir George? That's correct, yeah. Right. So I remember Sir George because I used to go to um, QB's on Sundays. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I'm showing my age. <laughs> I used to go to QB's on a Sunday, and, man, I never missed a Sunday. It was ram-packed every Sunday. Um, yeah. probably one of the best well-known clubs in East London at the time. Uh, the Sir George And Sir George, the, one of the things that I loved about um, Anthony, their, their sound system was great and they used to play with lots of different other sounds. It wasn't them every week. It was them and Serge. And. It was them and Sir Biggs. It was them and, do you know what I mean? It was always yeah. another sound. And it was always on that level where you'd hear great reggae music and great soul music. Love yeah. that so much. So tell us about Anthony. What what happened with Anthony? So Anthony um, brought the classic uh, Atlantic Star um, Touch of All His Clover to me, and uh, we did it. Um, and then he we had another song, and I didn't like this song. I didn't want to do it. So my negotiating my negotiation skills started quite early. So. Anthony said, look, I've got this song, Smile, and I'm like, nah, I want to do my own song. So I had a song called It Love, which I'd written and produced. And so we had a deal that if I could have it on the B side, then I would do Smile. And that was our agreement. Never really performed It's Not Love, because Smile then became the, the PA circuit. We were doing that all the time. Um, but yeah, it was a great relationship uh, with Anthony. And uh, thereafter moved on to I, I believe the it was, track smile was um was it was it collage no it was sister sledge sister sledge oh the sister sledge cut yeah i know yeah. i know what i know know what which one you're talking about all right great song great song thank you what did you move on to so thereafter i was doing some stuff with the great lloyd chalmers who was okay. also a great father figure and friend um, we did a song, not for here, it's for the Japanese market on a compilation album, um, Knocking on Heaven's Door. So a select few might have it, but it, it's out there. Um, and then after Lloyd Chalmers, um, who remained a forever friend, I miss him so dearly, uh, was Total Contrast, Dora and Robin. Nice one. Um, and uh, we became a writing back in vocal um, collaboration. We, we really did well as a team. And there came out G-Baby and Here I Go Again. Um, I love I love this feeling. It's not love. No, not it's not love. You know when you do so many, you forget. I know, <laughs> forget I know. There's just so many, they all roll into one. But G-Baby was a track and a half. G-Baby. Yes, G-Baby. Oh I don't gosh. wanna cry over <laughs> anymore. <laughs> oh my days! How yeah. how did this lovers rock thing come about? Because I, I look if 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 you believe what's out there, it was mm -hmm. Lloydie Coxon. Mm -hmm. All right, when we're talking about coining the phrase and everything else, Lloydie Coxon of Cox um, Sir Coxon Outer National, and mm -hmm. Louisa Mark was Louisa Mark one of the. Absolutely. Louisa Marx, Marie Pierre, people often forget the great Samantha Rose. Yeah. So I was doing back, yes. back in so, the day. So at oh, that time, like at that time, Toyin, were you just a little wee lass with your, your, your hairbrush in the mirror? Yep. yep. And my hair net. My, don't get my hair net. <laughs> my, my borderline skirt and my gold tip shoes and my crocodile oh. shoes. Oh. It was all about. But um, I was doing backing vocals in those days um, for some of the artists. Um, 
And how the Lovers Rock thing came about was, I actually didn't start in Lovers Rock. A lot of people don't realize that. I actually started in Roots. Roots music. And absolutely, Fat Man. So that's what yeah. I was doing um, with Instigators. And like I said, it was Fat Man's vision whilst doing that, because we were opening for all of the big names that were coming out of Jamaica at the time, Gladiators, Barrington Levy, Instigators were the opening band and then went on to be the backing band. But Fat Man always had it in his mind for me to be a lover's rock singer. Um, there was a song at the time, Hello Stranger. I yeah. wish I could remember who the artist was, but that song was really pinnacle um, in moving me in that direction. That and um, for harmonies, it was uh, Jar Bring I Joy. Wow. That was another, but I love, even to this day, I do backing vocal arrangements. Um, I, I personally think I'm a better backing vocalist than I am a vocalist in the creation because I just love it, I'm really passionate about it. Yeah. And it, yeah, it really took off from there. Lovers Rock has always been my foundation. That's what I grew up listening to as well. In school, you know, we would get together and pretend to be a good band and yeah. sing a lot of songs. So that's the foundation for me. And, and jazz, I loved jazz. So it's wow. kind of evident in my arrangements. It's great to hear you say that. So you, you, you're well-rounded really when it comes to musical genres. Um, you've mentioned jazz, um, you've mentioned roots, you mentioned lovers rock. Um, but yeah, just amazing um, story. When I think about um, those days, because, you know, you talked about the fashion. <laughs> the fashion was something else. I mean, you know, going to QBs on a, on a Sunday, man, I, I felt a little bit inag ad inadequate because I couldn't afford... Um, a little bit ashamed to say, but I, could, I couldn't afford a real pair of crocodile shoes or lizards or, you know, whatever the style was back then. But but just remembering those days with so much, um, you know, joy, because the music scene back then was just completely, you know, you could immerse yourself in it. And right now we're seeing a... Um, um, a, a renewing of Lovers Rock coming back to the fore. Do you find yourself getting booked for, um, and I know you have some sort of allegiance to setting up these events where Lovers Rock uh, events, where you organise. You all Tell us about that, because th there is a big movement oh. of that going on right now, right? You you have done your research. So, yes. um, yeah, <laughs> today, I mean, they now but i was doing these like uh 18 years ago 20 years ago and there was a series called the lovers rock reunion yeah so lovers rock reunion we had five consecutive years of sellouts and that was myself and um mikey Koo's authentic real music okay, and I'm mikey yeah so and my um company talitha voices entertainment at the time so we were doing one of the first of those Lovers Rock reunions and it was called, it, well, it was called Lovers Rock reunion. It was a five part series. And we were pulling out all of the artists that A, had either gone into retirement and B, um, some people had never seen before. People like Yvonne Douglas, they knew that their, their songs in the middle of the night, they knew 15, 16, 17, they knew Blood Sisters, but they hadn't seen these artists perform. So Mike and I kind of got them out of retirement. Some of them really did refuse. And due to our friendship had said, you know, okay, um, I'll step out and do that. And Louisa was on, Louisa's last performance actually was for us. It was the anniversary of Lovers Rock that we did. I think it was either at the Ocean or Hackney Empire. I can't remember, it was one of those. And um, yeah, they were successful back then. So that was in the millennium. I think I think it's full time that you did it again because um, I like the fact that you brought some people out of retirement because um, when you think about it, right, the advancement in technology, obviously when they were first out, the, you know, the advance they weren't being filmed. You either you either, you either went to the venue and saw them performing, or you didn't, and now. You don't have to go to um, a venue to see them because someone would yeah. have recorded it 
and you can see it on YouTube or you can someone might send it out as a, a WhatsApp video or, or what or, or Instagram, whatever. Um, so I could just imagine because it was just the other day, literally a few days ago, that right. I saw a video of Paul Dawkins. Right. Right? Now some people are like, Paul Dawkins what? But Paul Dawkins was the one that sang Natural Woman. Do it. Yeah. Fantastic yeah. Lovers Rock song. And the reason why I saw it, because he was part of the celebration of Millie Smalls. Blue pack, blue plaque. Um, you know, they were putting up a blue plaque for Millie Smalls in, in okay. London. And he was right. part of the celebration and he sang the song and it was videoed and someone passed on the video and I saw it and I thought like, wow, is that is that the guy that sang that song? Yep, so, did. You see what I mean? There, there's probably quite a few more artists out there, Toyen. You yep. guys need to put on some more events. Well, you know, I have been asked. I mean, I am, as you mentioned, I am coming back um, in three weeks. Uh, I'm coming back on the 26th of November uh, to do a Lover's Rock uh, tribute show. Um, and, you know, I'm looking forward to that because we're doing just that again. It's uh, coming back together with some of the artists. Yeah. In terms of the promotion side of things, now I'm more passionate about doing that with gospel reggae. Because I think um, the gospel reggae is still is still not giving its its flowers as as it should should do, and so I think we want to see more of that. But yeah, I'm still a part of that movement, but I'm more looking forward to the the gospel reggae events. I'll, I'm going to see what I can do to help on that front because I oh. I I am totally one hundred percent in sync with what you've just said. Um, so right. you've got Royal Diadem, you've got um, uh, Annette B. There is so That's many people, um, Adelaide McKenzie. There's stacks and stacks and stacks. Um, yeah. uh, and and on, on, the, on the guys' front, you've got people like Lighty, you know, <laughs> Josh Lakens. There's so many. Yeah, there's enough of us to do a series yeah. um, for sure. Um, and, and live, because that, that's my passion. It's always been live, because I started live. I didn't get to do, believe it or not, I didn't get to do my album launch uh, for The Journey Continues. I'm grateful for the hits that have come from it, but COVID here. So even that, I look forward to coming back and doing that live. I've never done it yet. Okay. Because apart from the TCM Collective um, showcases that we've done, which was starting to touch on that kind of thing, um, because that's a showcase unto itself that needs to um, come back as well. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm absolutely sure that they will be well received, well attended. Just needs to, you know, do it in the right way, right venue, good promotion. Um, absolutely. Let's make it happen. All right. So <laughs> you talked about gospel reggae. Um, mm -hmm. Most people would know you from the days when you wasn't a Christian. Tell us when the transition happened. Tell us your testimony. How did you come to Christ? Right. So, you know, I'm trying to think. There's, there's a couple of tears to that. So I moved out to the States, as you know, I live out here now, um, in 2005. Um, so I, I, I was baptized about 2003, 2002. Um, I was a Christian. I'd probably say I was always a Christian, but I was never in relationship. I was in religion because, you know, we had to go to church, parents, um, but weren't practicing the lifestyle. When I came to America, um, I was um, married at the time. I'm now divorced. And when I came out here, began a very difficult journey so much so that I actually thought God brought me out here to punish me. I had left fans, family, friends, and somehow ended up in isolation. But in that isolation, I ended up in a one-on-one -on -one time with God because I was going through things in life that, um, how I didn't lose my life 
through it all. I, I don't know. Only God, but, but God, but God. Exactly. And so he really brought me to my knees to speak to him because, you know, when I was in London, not that we didn't have challenges, I had challenges, but I always had friends that could mask that. I always had events. I always had something that I didn't have to deal with the trauma or the pain of whatever it was I was dealing with. So I always had a shoulder to lean on. Um, and that wasn't always God. You know, I'd speak to him, but, you know, I didn't have time to just hang out with him. I got a place to go and people to see. So when he started to do that work um, in me, I had um, a gospel album out here in America called No Fear. And I wasn't planning for it to be a gospel album, but I'm more of a testimonial singer. Even in Lovers Rock, some of the songs I was singing were things that I was feeling. And... I started to realize this transition. He was talking to me, he was working through me. Um, I was dealing with things differently. And I realized he didn't bring me out here to punish me. He brought me out here to elevate me. But in order to do that, he had to get rid of the three Fs, friends, family, fans, um, for him to be first. And then everyone else and everything else comes secondary. And that's what happened, that transition happened. Um, I started moving into the corporate world uh, out here, getting into real estate, and that wasn't even my intention, only to discover the company I was working with was a Christian-based organization. They just don't carry the anthem of, hey, we're a Christian organization. And so I learned life skills through that, and then I started speaking to women that were going through um, domestic abuse. I've, I've been a victim of that. Um, women that have gone through rape, women that, you know, just horrible things that women have gone through. And God was sending me women, you know, in small groups to talk to me about their situation. I'd be talking to them and God would use me to make changes. And that developed this platform of motivational speaking. I wasn't trying to be a motivational speaker. It's just that God had allowed, he didn't cause me to go through some of the traumas that I went through, but he allowed for a bigger purpose. Because in what I've gone through, when I speak to people, I can speak to them with conviction and with experience to say, yeah, I know you went through that. Yes, I know it was really bad. But even in that, you know, God can pull you through. And I also had an amazing godmother uh, she's passed. She died the day after my mother, which was very difficult because I had the blessing of the two mums. Um, but she really taught me about um, a relationship with God. She was a pastor herself and not the religious aspect and the rigid rules that keep people away from coming to Christ. And um, it's been an amazing journey. So every time God uses me, the people that may be touched might be amazed or blown away, but not half as blown away as I am. I'm like, wow, Lord, like, <laughs> what just happened there? <laughs> what or just happened now? <laughs> yeah, speak words through me. And I say through me because those words sometimes come back to me like, wow, like you teach somebody and you learn from what you're teaching. It's like, wow. Um, and so I've just been asking him continually to, to use me in that way, and he has done. And no matter what I'm going through, and been through some some traumas, as you know. I know, I know, I know. You've been through, you've been through the ringer, and then yeah. some. Um, I remember just doing some research and um, discovering about, um, and I hope you don't mind me bringing this up, but yeah, your son passing away. You were 21 years old. And I thought yeah. to myself, my goodness, you spent 21 years together, mm. you know. I mean, there's never a good time to lose any member of your family anyway. But, no. you know, after 21 years, yeah, it must have been so hard for you. It was. And, again, only, you know, I don't know how people have done it without God because it was a struggle with God. So I don't know how people have done it. So losing my son and then losing my mum and losing my godmother all within 24 months. Yeah. Uh, and I was about to lose my mind, but God wasn't going to allow that. But, you know, sometimes God will give you purpose through your pain. That's what he did with me. It, it, my pain fueled my purpose. 
and it made me even more driven to touch lives and to live with purpose on purpose it taught me what we should know but take for granted and that death does not have an expiration date no. we and it doesn't send you an invitation and it's not whether you're good or whether you're bad it's not whether you're young or whether you're old it's not even whether you're healthy or not my son died at 90 at 21 my mother died at 91 and i wasn't ready for either of them i spoke to my son the night before and it was a very um very profound conversation, which I now realize was God's grace. And I say this because that night my son said to me, it was a silly conversation. He called to, to, for me to confirm that he was half Jamaican, half African, and he was English because his friends out here, they don't believe. It. They don't believe. It's like, oh, come on, you know, you're American. Cause he's the old American kid out here. And I'm like, son, it's 1.30 in the morning, really? If they don't believe, just, leave it alone and then he went on to say mom you know um i just want you to know you're a really great mom you know i you raised us so well i don't want you to ever feel that you failed us i don't want you to ever feel that coming to america was a wrong decision it was the best thing you ever did for us even with the hard times that we went through he said everything you taught me mom about females about education friends money you were right about everything i'm gonna do better mom i'm gonna be better and he said, and I want you to get back to your music. I want you to get back to traveling around the world. You've got people's lives to touch, mom. You've got stories to tell. He said, I need you to get back to it. He said, I'm gonna come with you this time. I'm gonna be with you everywhere. I'm gonna come with you on tour more. So to have that conversation and him be gone the next day, um, suddenly, uh, was really like hard to process. But I realized God gave me the privilege and it may not happen for everybody and I understand that he gave me the privilege of that conversation that when the dark days come I had that to hold on to that I could remember um, and embrace that um, a death is for all of us and if we stop taking it for granted maybe talk about it more we'll realize it's always going to have a deadly sting and more the messages for us that are still here what are we going to do with our lives? What impact? When my son had a home going here in America before I brought him to London, about 500 people turned up that I didn't even know. Um, in his 21 years, he touched more lives than some people I know that have touched in 50 years. And they all came up with their stories. They were lined up across the wall, all wanting to share. He wasn't the perfect kid by any means. He was 21, so, you know, <laughs> that comes with its own challenges. He was, he was a kid. <laughs> He was, a, he, was he, was, a, he was a young chap, a young boy. He was trying to figure it out. And, you know, he left me with a granddaughter. That night he said to me, Mom, I want to do like you. I want to have a boy and a girl. I don't want no baby mama drama. So even if I'm not with um, the mother of my daughter, I still want her to have my kid. He said, but I'm not ready yet. Maybe when my daughter's about three or four. We found out a week after he passed that she was pregnant. So I have my grandson as well now, who is just like his dad. <laughs> really? <laughs> so, I hope you don't it, mind me asking, you know, because you had this conversation, okay, and then the following day, he's gone. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't a long drawn out thing. What, what, what did he, how did he, how did he pass? He suffered a heart attack. Um, my son suffered from sleep apnea, which a lot of, um, our people do, a lot of people suffer from sleep apnea and don't know that they have it. So if you know somebody that snores very loudly, yes. um, you hear them going <coughs> like stopping in the middle of their, um, their speak, snore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> their heart is actually it's stopping. The heart stops beating. And that, <coughs> that push is the valve opening up with the pressure to release the oxygen. When you put on weight, or if you're a little bit more sedated, if you've been drinking, it, you're making your heart even, it's even harder for the heart to push through. Because you know, your, your body's even more relaxed. My son was told to wear his CPAP mask. And at 21, you don't want to be wearing a mask. It's not the most appealing thing when you're going on dates. He refused to wear his mask. And the, the rest is history. It was sudden, it was without warning, uh, but uh, 
Yep. Life. Thank you for sharing that. I know it couldn't have been easy. It couldn't have been easy. And then it was something like two years after that, your mother passed. Yeah. Uh, She was 91. She was 91 and she was well. And COVID stole her. And then my godmother died the next day. And the way that mum, you know, I won't even go too much into that because that's still one I'm trying to get my head around because I have recordings of my mum saying they're trying to kill me. Mm. Um, And all I can give God thanks for is that it wasn't a long suffering. But sadly, I mean, she was in the hospital maybe 10 days and then she was gone. But she didn't go in for COVID. She went in for something else and they moved her to a COVID ward and didn't tell us and didn't tell her. And again, God's mercy and grace, I gave her a cell phone, a mobile phone to take with her into the hospital. So we were able to get information that we wouldn't have had to her and from her, you know, like taking food and then not giving it to her, but not telling her and telling me that, oh yeah, we gave it to her and speaking to her and realizing, no, she never received. So, you know, I won't get into conspiracy theories because these are not conspiracies. These are my actual facts. Yeah, most definitely. And I've not had the energy to fight um, because, again, I've just got to keep it moving. Yeah, and stay positive. I understand because you can kind of get bogged down with all of that. I know it's your mum and everything, but, yeah, you can actually get bogged down. And and then, you know, lawyers and blah, 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 blah. Right, let me switch (laughs) gears just for a little while. So in my introduction, I said that you're a motivational speaker, songwriter, singer, um, but you're also an author, right? And uh, you started writing books, children books. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? (laughs) Aim to purpose. So I'm a grandmother now. And one of the things that I felt growing up is a lot of the children's books that we read growing up didn't reflect us um there was nothing to identify with us people that look like us and um i remembered reading aesop's fables um as a child i i liked those stories that had hidden meanings and motivate motivational messages so i wanted to write books following the death of my son um for my grandchildren and the generation coming up that not only had fantasy, but also had hidden messages of hope, determination, self-realization, and um, there's messages, there's subliminal messages within my stories, and to educate them through entertainment. So I have a book out now called Money Loves Me, and that's got mixed races in there. So there's an Asian, Asian, and there are two black children in there. And it's about a relationship with money. So money lives in this family, lives in the right. house. Uh-huh. And money is a story. And money's really sad because the family keeps talking about him like he doesn't exist. And he goes on a mission to see if he can find other monies to help this family. Okay. And, in this, and animated, so you can go to YouTube, uh, Money Loves Me by Toy and Eddie Carly. And there is a summarized animation of the book because I'm trying to get it onto the screen. So. Okay. Okay. Um, you wrote one before that as well. Crystal. The Crystal City. The Crystal City. That's right. Yeah. Tell yeah. us about that one. Right. So that's about um, a young lady that's modeled after my daughter, um, Tally. Tally, well, she's an artist as well. And um, this young lady lives in a town where everybody does the same thing every day. Everybody feels the same thing, helpless and hopeless and bored. And she decides, she had this dream actually about this crystal city and discovered that some of her other friends um, had the same vision, but nobody wanted to go out there. So she was gathering a few friends and she's going to go and look for the crystal city. Well, of course, when you're following your dreams, you're going to bump into hurdles, obstructions, friends falling by the way. And so the journey is who's going to go with her? How many of them stick it out with her? And does she even find that victory? And you have to go on the journey with her. And um, 
I've done an audio book for that. I've got some of my nephews and my nieces doing the voices of the children. Oh, excellent. I, I want to get uh, I want to get that on big screen. But when I first spoke to a potential um, animator, I didn't have a quarter of a million in my pocket. You know? Right. Not yet. <laughs> not quite. <laughs> not, not yet. Um, but vision, and I'm actually working on part two of that book. And then the other books for adults, My Mind Wide Open, Surviving Mental Lockdown. Those are, it's not like a daily devotional, but each, each chapter is just one page. I wrote the book for people like me. I'm an author that doesn't like to read big chunks of the book. Um, and I want it to be palatable for people. So I want them to be able to get as much in a short space of time. Because let's face it, today's world, everyone does have a shorter attention span than say back in the day. There's so much stimulation um, around, you know, social media and yeah. the news. Um, their, their attention span is very short. So I wanted to tap into that. And so each chapter is just one page and it has an illustration to reinforce because what your eyes, what your ears hear, but what your eyes see kind of uh, reinforces the message. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Tell, tell me the title of that one again. My Mind Wide Open. My Mind Wide Open. Surviving Mental Lockdown, because it's actually a series and part two will be coming out in the new year. For 2024. Man, something, mm -hmm. something positive to look forward to. Absolutely excellent. So, <laughs> my goodness, singer, songwriter, motivational speaker, uh, author. Have I left out anything? <laughs> Yeah. Producer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you That's are okay. a woman after my own heart, honestly. God is definitely blessing you and continuing to bless you as well. So the song that I've been playing, I just absolutely love. Call Out My Name. It's a cover version. Tell us who did the original. Carol King. Carol uh, King did the original. One of my favourite singers from the 70s. Yeah. I, I just love the lyrics to the song. I mean, you you uh, reworked it, obviously, with God on your mind, you mm. know. But um, I've heard you sing it a few times. I, um, I actually, for the first time when I heard it was at the uh, GX Awards in Birmingham when you came over. And um, you're, up, you're up on stage singing, and I thought to myself, I've got to go and talk to her. <laughs> Oh. I've got to go and talk to her. Do you remember? Yes, I do. Came over, spoke to you, and I thought, my, I thought, I got to speak to you because um, the genre of gospel lovers rock is something that can just absolutely explode, and mm -hmm. um, you sing so well. You've got, you've got the experience of years of singing in this genre, but then to beautify it, you are now. Um, singing for the Lord, right? Amen. Um, and you do it so well. And I'm just so, it fills my heart with joy. It really does. It really does fills my heart with joy. Tell us about the plans going forward in terms of your recording aspects of what you do with regards to um, the music that you create. What's right. the plan? So um, the old well, I won't call it the album. The last album, The Journey Continues, hasn't really had enough life um, out there uh, in the atmosphere, even though there's been a few number ones from it because of COVID, of course, and it's just starting to... Yeah. I think There's on still that a album, lot of mileage in it, isn't there? Absolutely. So I need to um, expose that a bit more uh, next year. Um, of course, I've got a couple of books coming out. Musically, I have three other projects that I've been working with, H&H um, &H, um, Productions, so Hammond and Harmony, because uh, yeah. they did a few on the last album, and we'll be doing some stuff on this album. Um, there's some stuff that I'm doing with um, with Mikey Coos that should be coming out pretty soon. Okay. Um, I think what I need... What I'd love to do more now is some live shows um, reflecting those those songs that are out there and the ones uh, to come. 
And I'm actually looking to write for more artists. So if there are any artists out there that are looking for songs, because to be honest, I can't sing everything that I've written because I have so many other uh, projects going on, which I can't speak about right now. Yeah. But I'm excited for, for what lies ahead. Wow, that's, that's absolutely excellent to hear you say that, you know, you'd love to write for other people as well. And I'm sure, absolutely sure, that you're going to get a few people reaching out to you. Um, let's let's put that to rest right now. How can people get hold of your social networks? Give us all your details, please. Okay, so my website is a good place, toynadikali.com. My Instagram, Facebook, I do have two profiles on Facebook. They're both legit. So there's toynadikali and there's toynadikali singer, songwriter, author. Both will get hold of me. And of course, Instagram. I don't tweet. I got to be honest, I'm not very good with Twitter. Uh, it, it's difficult trying to keep on all of those platforms, but I think Instagram is probably going to be the best, uh, the easiest, or, or Facebook. Excellent. So there you have it. You've got all of the information that you need to get hold of my guest, Toyan Adikali. Toyan, um, earlier on, we spoke about being managed by um, Fat Man. Um, Anthony played a role. Is anybody looking after you at the moment? Or is it self-managed? The Heavenly Father looks after me. <laughs> I, I, it's 30 years. Yeah. Say that again um, for me. I haven't had a manager in 30 years. But you know what? I think at this point in my life, I would be happy to have somebody take over some, because when you're a creative and you're doing the administration as well, sometimes it's a bit of a challenge, especially when you've got other things like life going on. So, I mean, that's why it took so long for you and I to get together. I'm handling no. this, I'm handling that, and no. uh, you've got to be on top of the administration. So I, I wouldn't mind having somebody to take me to the next level. Yeah. So I hear that. Who I hear that. I hear that. I hear that. Um, listen, God has blessed you with so much, so much. And I know that there's a stack more to come. So I, my prayer for you is, Lord, give us some strength, please. <laughs> and more grace. <laughs> because the work is just beginning. It really is. Yeah. It's just beginning. It's just yes. beginning. But, um, you know, you are such a wonderful person and um, you have helped over the years. You've helped so many people. Um, your ministry, which you don't realize, is um, just at the infant stage. Um, you know, God's going to give you a word in your mouth for so many people when you do finally hit that stage. And, um, you know, we, we need to get back to the days of when we attended um, Christian music events and at the end of the event or in the middle of the event or whenever the Lord said, um, you do an altar call. Yeah. Um, it was something that was like the done thing, um, yeah. you know, a few quite a few years ago. You could never go to a Christian event and without seeing an altar call, people would come to Christ, you know. Yeah. So we need to get back to that. And I know that the Lord's going to use you in a mighty way. I'm absolutely certain of that. Amen? Amen. 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 Um, so for your loyal fans out there, what would you like to say before you uh, wave goodbye? I'd like to say put God in everything, absolutely everything. And if you don't know him, just taste, test and see. It, it is good. It is good. And, you know, better try him than try and figure it out for yourself because there are some things we can't do for ourselves so you've got nothing to lose we're just trying yeah i liked what you said earlier on about the the, the three f's remind me again the three f's i had to leave my friends family and fans to have so, first yeah and the bible tells us right that um when we put god first all things all things all. will be added absolutely you're and a witness that, to that right do you know something i have so much more than when i i have so much more with less 
than I had back in the day when I had more abundance. It's I understand I can't... what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> crazy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Who can fathom God, right? Who can fathom God? Uh, thank you so much. My pleasure. Absolutely, mine as well. Thank you so much. Well, there you go. My guest on the program today was um, Toyan Adikel. And um, I just give God thanks for her life. She is an absolute child of God that God is going to bless in abundance. If you like what you saw today, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, leave us a comment and some likes. That'd be nice. Um, and I'll catch up with you on the next one. God bless you.